coverage of this wonderful event over two days. I'm joined now by Jeffrey Eugenides to talk about his new book, Fresh Complaints. It's nice to talk to you again. It's been nice a few years. Nice to see years. you, Jeff. Has been. Yes. How are you? I'm all right. I'm Good. in Miami. The sun is shining, and yeah. I'll go back to colder New Jersey tonight. Yeah. So. Good things could be worse than yeah. looking out there. Yeah. This is a book of short stories. It is. Throughout your career, life, your career. life. Yeah. My yeah. Life. First one was um, written in, when I was in graduate school at Stanford. Really? I was about oh. 27 or so. Yeah. Uh, it's Capricious Gardens. First thing I ever published. And the last two stories that comprise about a third of the book are written were written in 2017, 2016. So they're recent. So the whole the whole Megillah is there. The whole Megillah. Yeah. Now, what what was it like to go back and uh, sort of pull things from the past? A little bit like reading your diary. I don't keep a diary, so I don't really know what that's like. But, oh, really? You, know, you so, go back. Oh, so, you but this is as close as you're going to get. Yeah, you encounter your younger self. You remember yeah. what you were doing, thinking, what you were reading, what stage you were going through. Yeah. So a little bit that kind of feeling of recognizing and not recognizing yourself a bit of that what did so, um, so tell me i mean what did you see when you went back to uh well some of the with, with the ones. early story capricious yeah. gardens i i could see that i was reading a lot of central european novelists like herman brock robert musel milan kundra the tone was this feels very familiar i went through right, in the, <laughs> yeah it was the, it it was was the mid 80s time, yeah. right yeah right but we were being exposed to a lot of those exactly people, yeah. and the, yeah. you know the tone is detached playful yeah. The characters are, in a sense, more like puppets that you're yeah. manipulating for a certain ironic effect. Yeah. The French farce is, is a little bit in the, in, the, in the air of the story. And then, you know, as I move on and get older, I see the stories get, in, in some respects, more serious, more psychological, more realistic. And I, yeah. I treat the characters as though they, they, they exist in a certain way, and they're not just ideas. Do, do you, um, I mean, this whole idea of influence from what yeah. you're reading. right. Do you see that in the stories? Do you feel it at a given time as a writer? I do. I do feel it. You do? Yeah. yeah. I think you shouldn't be too worried about influence because when you're starting out, even, even now when you're reading a book and it really affects you, yeah. it's telling you something about your own inclinations and talent. That's why you like the book in the first place. So you need to find you know, what, you, what you like in order to, to write. So yeah. it's not a question of the anxiety of influence all the time. Because right. if you take a lot of influences in, they'll mix around and they won't, they won't really be so, I don't know, totalizing or you know, dominant. Um, I mean, Bob Dylan talks about it all the time, all the yeah. songs that he had to read and all the people that he, he copied and was influenced by. You can't, you can't write something out of nothing. So, but I, I see the different stages I went through and who I was yeah. reading and, and what I was thinking about in terms yeah. of literature a lot. I mean, yeah. you mentioned Dylan. I mean, so is music yeah. part of that as well? Not really, no. I mean, music's a part of my life as it is everyone's, but it never affects my, my yeah. writing, not really. Yeah. Just just books do. So when you were saying earlier that there was a certain point where your characters started being, what did you say, who they are or, um, or more real? As or, though they uh, exist or as real. As though they or, exist, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 What, what does that mean exactly? Well, I... um. There was a certain point, at first I thought I shouldn't write about people I knew, that it was some kind of violation or simplification or it was too easy. So I would try to invent characters out of whole cloth. Yeah. And then little by little I realized, I think I should base characters on a number of people and mash them together, but really try to notice what I'm, what I'm seeing and you know, notice my friends and, and enemies and put, put, them in, put them in books. So there's a, the first story in the collection is called Complainers and it's, Based on on my mother who died last year, yeah, and I it's combined two older women. Two older women. Yeah. And I, what I did was I used my mother because I knew my mother. I knew everything about her. I can hear yeah. her voice now. Yeah. But I wrote about the part of her life I knew least well, which was this friendship she had with a younger woman throughout most of her life. Mm -hmm. the, the part of her life that she lived outside our home. So I, I had the ability to invent that, imagine it, which is what I'm used to doing as yeah. a novelist. But I had a character whom I knew intimately, how, how, how she thought, what she liked. What, so I, I've gotten, as a writer, to do that more often. I'll use a character that I know and put them into situations that didn't happen mm -hmm. and sort of combine the, the real with the, with the unreal and, and try, to, try to write fiction that but way. But is there a certain moment in that process where you're kind of saying, oh, well, act actually, my mother wouldn't have done that, or I, now I've left my mother, or, um, or whatever the character is. It depends is, on, yeah. the, on the yeah. story, yeah. yeah. With, with yeah. my mother... I mean, I, I made up things that she that she does all the time. I don't have a problem violating reality or, or what yeah. happened. That's that's yeah. for, that's very easy for yeah. me. But I don't want her actions to be inconsistent with the person she is. 
given that I'm basing yeah. you know, the psychology on hers. But yeah. but she she does things that never happened in life. I'm not interested in just writing what, what happened. And if I do that, I can't tell if it works dramatically. I need uh -huh. to shape it more than that. So, well, then I have to ask you about this second story, because yeah. I was just asking you right. about it before we yeah, started yeah. here. Airmail, mm -hmm. about a young man yeah. uh, suffering from uh, food poisoning yeah. in, in an island yeah, in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, is that based on a real uh, that is. person like you? That or? is, yeah. I took a yeah. year off in college and yeah. traveled around the world like, like your son is doing now. Yeah. And in those days, um, you you were cut off from everything. There was right. no Facebook, no internet. You didn't call home very much. It was expensive right. and difficult. So you wrote letters, and that's why it's called air mail. If you remember those blue aerograms, of course. Yeah, yeah. you would just write, write the letter on both sides and then and lick it yeah. and, and send it. Yeah. And he is going through a religious stage, and he's writing these letters, and He's a little bit loopy, a little bit enlightened, and a little bit crazy. Right. And he's sick, and he's trying to cure himself through spiritual means. Yeah. And I did go through a, a stage like that, and I sent a batch of alarming letters to my parents. Yeah. Um, they were almost fictive in, in, in themselves. I was <laughs> kind of writing about myself as another character. So when my parents got them, they thought I was about to join a, a cult or something. They thought huh. I was really going crazy. So I remembered that, and I, and I structured the story around that. Did, but were you already a writer at this point? I was, trying to, be, be I was trying to be a writer. I mean, I knew yeah. I wanted to be a writer, right. and I had this journal that I carried around India and Thailand. Mm -hmm. And the, the entries, I said I didn't care, have a diary, and it's true because the entries were third-person accounts of a character named Thomas who I based on myself. And so Thomas was always doing things. Really? And I was teaching myself how to write fiction, and I would just be in a town, and something would happen to me, and I would write it as though it was a scene. And that's kind of how I, how I practiced. Now, and then the letters the, were like that, too. Where did you get this idea I mean, of, of, of writing a diary in the third person? About I don't know. It just seemed like a normal thing to do if you wanted to be a, a, a writer, yeah. to try to get distance on your experience and mm -hmm. fictionalize it. So that's, that's what I did. I mean, I was writing stories back at college, so yeah. I kept doing it on my trip. Yeah. So, you, you, I mean, a collection of short stories from through many years. Yeah. When is it that you turn to the short story? As opposed to writing novels. And well, I started writing short stories before yeah. I wrote novels, as, right. as one does in, in college or graduate school, and keep trying to, to do it. It's the hardest mm -hmm. form. You know, it's very unforgiving. You can't make too many mistakes. You have to get in and get out very mm -hmm. quickly. So I've been trying to, to learn how to do it and expand the potential of, of meaning in a short space, still working on it. It's not something I'll ever, you know, master. What, explain so. what's so hard about it. There's, there's no room. You know, I, I, I'm a novelist by inclination. I start writing about an idea, and I might write yeah. a page and a half on, on that idea. And if you do that in a short story, you don't, you know, you end up with 90 pages very, very quickly. Yeah. The longest story in my collection is 50 pages, and yeah. you know, you can argue whether it's a short story or, or mm -hmm. something else. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to economize and get all of the characterization, plot, atmosphere in, in just a few sentences. That's, mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to do. It's Closer to poetry, really, than than to writing novels. So. Yeah, but so th this is the art of sketching a character. Yeah, right. and every and you know an event and rise and fall of action and some sort of problem that gets worked out. All the all those yeah. things that you do in a novel, but you know crammed into a tiny little jar. So. Yeah. So so uh, I mean, dare I ask, have you do you see yourself having gotten better at it once you're, well, you were talking about uh, some changes from the earlier stories yeah what about you as writer able to sketch a character or an event? i know what i know i've changed what i try to do with a short story now i think of short stories as novels i, I and you i think of them what i as think them as novels like the the first story complainers which is you know the one yeah. about my my mother and her friend yeah. and the last story which involves two characters a, a teenage right. another complaint right another complaint yeah. <laughs> i could have written those as novels there's enough material there that if I wanted to, they could have been a novel of about 220 pages. I could have gone into the, f the history, the past, the family, yeah. and everything. And so I could see it as a novel, and I contemplated writing them as novels, but then I just took out everything that is you know, not necessary to tell the, the actual story. So I hope that when the reader reads it, they feel all this other material that I cut out because it kind of informs it like yeah. dark matter hangs in the in the universe more more prevalent than than actual matter it's that kind of feeling so you have to overwrite and then and then reduce it so that's how that's how I'm writing now my short stories I, I don't think of them as a small event I think of them as a life encapsulated in a, in a short 
but, but then why not write them as novels? I mean, why not expand them? How do you make in, that in those decision? Case, in those cases, I didn't feel that I would write a good novel with those characters. I, I could have written uh, their family. I could have written the past. I didn't know if I, if I knew mm -hmm. enough to do it right. Yeah. So part, part, of, part of it was protection. I, I could only write about those characters accurately and hopefully interestingly over a short span. Yeah. And I have other novels I want to write, you know, so I put them in, I, I made it to be a short story. But it was nice to think of it as a novel. Do, do you, I mean, we're talking about writing uh, style and uh, how you do it, but what about themes? As I'm flipping through, yeah. I, it looks like you're usually writing about middle class people, I think. Mm -hmm. and a, lot, a lot of time they're worried about money. Yes. They're, they're a little bit... Um, you know, they have lives, but they're yeah. a little bit at awe at yeah. sea. Yeah. Does that sound right to you? That sounds right. I never think, I never think about themes, but obviously they emerge automatically yeah. from what yeah. you write. Yeah. Um, certainly, m problems with money is something I'm intimately acquainted with. My father made a fortune and lost a fortune in his yeah. life. Yeah. My mother grew up extremely poor, lived well while she was married to my father, ended up poor. So I've I've seen the American dream attained and lost within one generation and yeah. and what it does to people and how yeah. precarious it is and if you look around what's going on in, in in the in the country now that seems to be the main thing going going on for a lot yeah. of people yeah riches attained much much riches being being lost and 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 not being attained at all so mm -hmm. um it, it seems you know just natural to, to write about that yeah. it's something i've I've witnessed, you know, in my life up, up close. Well, and you wrote about it on a grander scale in, in Middlesex, for example, right? With yeah. The, yeah, that, that life of Detroit and... Uh, and the immigrant experience. And, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I haven't... My, my mother was the one who was extremely poor. She grew up in Kentucky um, oh. and, and, and kind of a kind of a hillbilly. And then they moved up the hillbilly highway to Detroit in the Depression. Uh -huh. And um, she was extremely poor, even poorer than my... Greek immigrant father was. Huh. Um, so I know a lot about Southern poverty and, and Southern uh, toughness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't write, you don't publish a lot of books, do um, you? Well, not so far, but I'm, I'm, I, I was really happy. <laughs> Annie Pru, Annie Pru just got the uh, yeah, Life yeah, Achievement Award. Yeah. And I think she said that she didn't start till she was 50. And so she thinks it's, you know, so that, that pleased me because I'm, I feel like I'm just starting in my 50s. I, I like how you said not so far. I mean, that's a very <laughs> no, I mean, hopeful. I'm not, uh, I'm not dead yet. I'm just no. getting going. And I'm, no, I feel like I'm going to speed up. But what? Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. Because? I, I'm starting to get the hang of things and, and also maybe psychologically ready not to attach so much uh -huh. importance to each book. I'm trying to get a more zen attitude. Maybe this won't happen. This is my hope. Is that what's been the holdup? Yeah, you worry. You worry. You want it to be perfect, and you you fret about you it. You worry it to death. It, Maybe that's what I have to do. Maybe yeah. that's just intrinsic to my personality. Yeah. And we'll be talking in ten years, and I'll have one more book. But <laughs> I, I hope to speed up a bit. I'm, I'll never be a fast writer because I I do just you know mess around too much. All right. Just last question here because we're asking everybody yeah. about sort of favorite or most important books. And you yeah. we just started this conversation about influence. Yeah. Is there an a, an American book? that you look to that was either one seminal for you as a reader or wanting to be a writer? Well, I was just, I had dinner last night with Akhil Sharma and we were talking yeah. about, about these things. Yeah. And someone asked me who my favorite character was in literature the other day at a yeah. reading. And I thought, I don't really think of literature that way. But then I realized if I'm honest with myself, I still like Holden Caulfield and, and The Catcher in the Rye. And ah. Akhil hasn't read that since he's 13. A lot of people don't, don't. Right. but my daughter's been having to read it in school many times. And I was reading it the other day, and it's still just as good and funny as 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 you re you remember it, even even better from mm -hmm. an adult perspective. So that that book, you know, I still like it. I, people dismiss it as something you read in high school, but I think it's great. All right, Jeffrey Eugenides book is Fresh Complaints. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. And stay with us here at the Miami Book Fair. We'll be right back. I'm Jeffrey Brown.